You know Paul Fritz? Well, Fritz was sitting on the boat in. And he did. It's the first trip in lava. The boat didn't flip, but he flew out of it. Went around to the back and popped the cork. <laughs> Talk about the wood, stainless steel and German silver and everything. So what we were talking about, so you can so what you're saying about Starting the Dories is that it sort of helped it happen accidentally and gradually? It happened while I was working on the magazine and uh, had a full-time job and and it kind of crept up on me without my really realizing it was happening but uh, it did and I was at one point in late 1968 uh, I guess it was in December I was having kind of a feud with the management at sunset. And uh, one day I just said, that does it, I quit and walked out. Threw away my security blanket. And what was left was the Dories and uh, it just blossomed and grew. And I didn't do much to cause that. But I didn't, you know, that became the main thing that we did after 67, I mean 68. Um, why use dories instead of the inflatables? Well, anyone who is a river person who has been in a dory would never ask that question. I know you're asking it because you want me to explain it for others. Um, first of all, inflatables did not come along in large numbers. Uh, when the river was being run by the pioneer commercial outfitters, Mexican half, uh, such things weren't available. I don't know whether they would have used them or not, but anything would have been an improvement over what they had. Uh, the dory is an ancient design. We didn't originate it. it it's uh, It goes back into antiquity. And uh, there's a kind of a magic about the shape of the boat in terms of its stability and its... Uh, ability to recover from extreme situations, uh, self-writing practically, and sometimes does. And after having been upset, it will write itself in the rapid. Uh, I had that happen uh, a year ago. Uh, the, uh, the boat is something beautiful to look at. It has lines that belong on the water. Uh, the dories really were adapted by us because they handle so well, they're enjoyable to row, uh, you get response from them, they respond to the oars, uh, they're safe relatively and secure, and they have places to put things, you don't just have things tied on and hanging on all over the place, and uh, places for people to sit, people to be where they can be comfortable for long trips. That is the Grand Canyon dory does now. Some dories, ocean dories and so forth, may be just open boats. But ours were equipped eventually in the process of evolution. We kept improving them so that they had sensible seating, good storage. Uh, things were handy and convenient in them. And you also could carry the supplies for a long, long trip. You had the capacity there. And uh, as everyone knows, the dories will take a tremendous, uh, uh, tremendously rough water that you would think would capsize almost anything and come up smiling. That doesn't mean that they can't go over, but when they do, which is a rare thing, uh, it's very easy to right them. They like to be right side up. They don't like to be upside down. And... Uh, for people to think they're doing a daredevil trick when they go in a dory, uh, those who report it that way, uh, in publications and so forth, in order to seem brave, I guess, they really should uh, look at the records. The only kind of craft that has never had a fatality or a serious injury in an accident in the Grand Canyon is the dory, uh, or at least a hard, small boat. And uh, 
Uh, you go to the, uh, if you want to go to safety records or injury records, uh, look at the numbers who have died in the great big so-called safe motorized pontoons and uh, the comparison becomes ridiculous because the Dories have had nothing like that. How did you come about naming them? I don't remember how the boats were named the way they came to be because at first they were named after various things that uh, well, like Pat Riley had his boat named after his wife, and I had one named after the place I came from, and so forth. But it was very shortly after I acquired the whole Dory thing that uh, it occurred to me that we weren't even noticing the places we were destroying and despoiling on the world, on the earth. And uh, so I thought people ought to be reminded of what we have injured on this earth and how we've hurt it. We shouldn't be able to escape from those things, just walk away and think there's something else uh, waiting that we haven't wrecked yet. So uh, places that man had destroyed or despoiled in one way or another seemed appropriate names for boats, uh, especially when you're still in a campaign to save the Grand Canyon, the most celebrated wonder, most celebrated natural wonder in the world. There's no question about that. Um, we haven't had to name one Grand Canyon because, oh, it's much injured. Probably it's not beyond hope, but uh, Glen Canyon is. And uh, uh, there are also are places that we see going going, not quite gone, we need to be reminded of what we're doing to them too. Lake Tahoe, for example, it's really beyond repair, and yet people think it's beautiful and want to go there. We ought to be reminding them that it's not what it was. Uh, other places that are hurt badly but uh, are still worth a fight, the Dory should be, I felt, could be used to help in the fight, to remind people we've got to get to work on this. Mono Lake is an example of that. And, uh, of course, the places in Glen Canyon that we named Doris for, those are all gone. Those are lost. Uh, but there, there are places where it's not entirely too late, and we should be reminded of those, too. We had Doris named for places in other parts of the world, not just, not just in our country. Other places are down the tubes, too, as well as our own wonders of nature. Beautiful places. How, um, you made a comment earlier about it had to do with when you were working at Sunset Magazine, you didn't feel like you were doing much good for the world. Um, you think that changed when you started the Dories? Well, when I was at Sunset, I tried to change Sunset. It took a long time and it was hard, but I wanted to point out to the management as well as to the readers that uh, uh, here is a publication, an organization that is profiting by the natural beauty of the West. That makes money for for companies like the publisher of Sunset, uh, to capitalize on it, tell people where to go, how to enjoy it, how to spend their money, and so forth. And that means that we have a debt there. We owe something in return. So while I was at Sunset, I tried every way to insert some conservation ethic into what we did. And uh, you couldn't just come out and say, write your congressman about this or that. It wasn't that kind of a publication. Uh, at that time, at least it wasn't. And so I would say, well, as you approach Joshua Tree National Monument, you can't help noticing the five-acre BLM homesteads, which have made the desert so damned ugly before you get to the monument, or words to that effect. And uh, that could get by. 
but some things couldn't. However, we campaigned for certain things in some ways in Sunset, like saving the redwoods in the north, and, and uh, it helped. It was not easy to get away with, but uh, we did some things there that had their effect. Um, I forget what your question was. Actually, I, I, I am. I'll tell you what, let's stop for just a second. Well, are, are we still talking about Dory's? Yeah. Well, actually, what we were talking about, no, we're talking about why be in this business? Why take people down the river? We didn't talk about the Dory's going up and over the waves instead of diving through them. Well, <laughs> Actually, we're talking about, about you're, you're talking about if you have to ask why, why do it? You'll never understand. Well, or you have to go on the river in a dory to understand. Well, you have to address the line again, though. Well, you're not on, are you? Yeah, we are. Oh. You finished Well, you could switch this stuff around. Well, we around. just never got that one on tape. So That's you, what I mean. Yeah. Well... There's a, a mystic thing about a dory to those of us who know them. And uh, I feel that anyone who looks at a dory and then has to ask why you use that uh, will never understand no matter what kind of an answer you give. So uh, it's a hard question to answer. Uh, I can't. Uh, I just know it's good to be on one of those. And uh, there are other ways to go, but it's the best. When I the, the question that I asked before, and this is. I'll tell you that, see, I'm running into the question, the thing that I'm bumping into is, why, why do this job? Why do this, why take these people down the river? Okay. The Are you asking me that now? Yeah. I don't know what impels one to uh, want to show people the Grand Canyon. Um, I, I know that one of my motives was to help them to care more, or to help them to see enough so they could care more about saving that natural river, which is not 100% natural since it's under control, but uh, once you're on it, there's no evidence of that. It's still the river it always was inside the Grand Canyon. Of course, it would not be that river. Uh, there wouldn't be any river if the marble, so-called marble and Bridge Canyon or Wallapai Dams, either one of those were built. Um, the best way for people to understand how important it is to have the bottom of the Grand Canyon preserved and have its aquatic life saved and its riparian zone with the beauty that's there kept uh, is perhaps to have them on that river and let them feel its life, the way it stirs and the way it rumbles and moves you along at its own pace. And uh, uh, sense, to sense a kind of uh, the life that the river has. It has that. Uh, it has a tremendous force and, and an appeal. It's not just a, a physical force, but uh, it has an appeal about it that uh, I can't describe, but getting people on the river means that they can understand that, and that was part of the motive. Another part of it was that uh, uh, I liked to be there, 
and people who were becoming my friends liked to be there. And it's hard for me to say no, I don't have any willpower that way. And uh, so when people want to go down the river, or when they did, I didn't know how to say no. So maybe I didn't want to say no. Uh, the other thing is that uh, eventually I was out of a job. I quit my job because I was uh, I was rather unhappy with what I was doing. I was disgusted that I wasn't contributing more to the betterment of the planet. And uh, I couldn't take that anymore. And I don't know that the Dorries contribute anything more than other jobs might, or more than other river trips might, but uh, I've always felt that we had a special conscience in our whole organization. Somehow it attracted the people who cared the most about the river, who were really deeply concerned with its future, and uh, maybe it's partly my imagination, but uh, our crews have always seemed to excel in that way. There's a, there's a soul about it, uh, uh, spiritualism almost, uh, uh, in the people who run dories down the river, and uh, in those who want to. And I think most guides on the river and most people who do it uh, as their avocation, uh, or at least many, look forward to the day when they can be doing it regularly in dories. Those who come to dories never seem to go away. And the numbers used to grow and grow, and all of a sudden I realize there are a lot of people around here going down the river with me, and I, I don't know who they are. And uh, you know who they are now, though. Well, I wonder why uh, you know, more people didn't go to Dorries. Other outfits? Yeah. Uh, the first outfits went in rigid boats, which were not dories, but uh, had some of the same characteristics. The only, uh, there are a number of reasons. First of all, there are those who are in it strictly for the money. And uh, that means they take as many people as they can in as short a time as they can, and charge as much as they can. And that would be the motor boats, the motor baloney boats, the big pontoons. Uh, it's obviously a, a straight factory operation. Move them through, get the boats back, move the next batch. There's not much personal interrelationship between crew and uh, uh, participants, customers, clients, whatever you want to call them. When you have one boatman uh, way back uh, running the motor on a big long rig, which uh, is fairly noisy, at least noisy to the, to the point that he has no communication uh, with his people while he's running, and uh, uh, they don't know what they're seeing. Uh, that's not much in the way of communication for them with the canyon. But when you have people in a boat close to the oarsmen, not way out on the ends the way they would be on a raft, but there's all communication all the time, constant communication. Uh, you have the closest experience to the to the canyon. It's, it brings people closer. And uh, the, uh, I forget your question now. Oh, I was just telling you why the other companies didn't. Oh, why they didn't go to doors, okay. Why, 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 didn't why are there a lot of raft rowing companies, or at least several, and they aren't rowing dories? Well, other companies have gone to Dory's to some extent, uh, Grand Canyon Expeditions, which is noted as one of the most successful, if not the most successful, of the large raft operators, the motorized raft operators, uh, now has a, a Dory schedule. They have Dory's and they run them uh, on a regular basis as regular trips. And the Park Service is glad of that. They will always approve moving to Dory's but they won't approve a dory operation going in any other way. And uh, uh, the disadvantage of the dory is that when you get to the end of the trip, 
You can't let the air out of it and roll it up in a small ball and throw it in the back of a truck. It takes special transportation. Uh, in order for the boat to look the way it should, uh, uh, to uh, express the pride of the crew, it needs uh, maintenance, refurbishing, painting, uh, cleaning up uh, between trips. And rafts don't get that kind of attention. They don't have the personality. They don't have names. Uh, one raft is the same as the other, uh, just another chunk of rubber. Uh, but the, uh, the dory instills pride in its crew. And the outfitters who don't use dories are more sensible in that they can make more money. They can save more money, let's put it that way, because transporting the dories takes space. You have to have the means to do it, uh, the trailers, the trucks, whatever you use. Uh, the dory's not full of air and can't be deflated. So uh, it's full size all the time. That's, that's the only disadvantage I can think of. The only reason people...